presentation from Ethel Shifton, who's part of Grace and Therese Foundation, about some art installments that have already begun and will continue in Yankee Park. And um, at different meetings and different conversations I've heard going on in the neighborhood, um, there's been some interest or comments on things people would like to see in the park or not see in the park. And so um, I thought it might be interesting to have people come and share their ideas and um, see how we feel about them and if there's anything we can do to improve the park. Um, so we'll start with Paul and go from there. First of all, I want to thank you uh, all for the uh, allowing us to have the Catherine Lee there at the top of the, the, top of the uh, park. Beautiful by New Braunfels. And then secondly, I want to apologize because I realized that I had somebody out the space for the next one, which I didn't realize we had not actually done all these other things. So 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 thank you and I apologize. So that's you, where we start. I was, <laughs> I've seen I've seen those I think. What are they where I didn't know really anything about them. what that what they even represent. Oh, uh, Kath yes, Catherine Lee, she'll be in the presentation as well. Catherine Lee is an abstract artist, originally from Pampa, Texas, uh, which is in the northern part of the, the Panhandle. And uh, she now lives in Wimberley, Texas, and she takes uh, 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 generic, not generic, what am I trying to think of, uh, organic uh, shapes and like monoliths and stones and makes them into sculpture and so those are uh, those are pieces called sorrow i believe and uh, there's three different parts of sorrow and uh, going through uh, life love it's in here i'm not going to remember all of them because i between that and other things uh life, life love sorrow sorrow three sorrows uh, life love Death and how were they paid? Sorrow. She loaned them to us. Oh, okay. She loaned them to Tres Enturas. Tres Enturas is a, if you don't know that, is a nonprofit uh, art organization that was started by two gentlemen who were lawyers, uh, Louis Tarver and John Wood. And I have been involved since pretty close to the beginning. They were always looking for a space and, and place in San Antonio to do these kinds of things. The idea of having a world-renowned uh, sculpture park. Uh, and you know, when you talk to other people, like the city of Duff, you want to say, we use um, Millennium Park in Chicago as an example. Of course, that's a completely different from our park. But the idea that you can walk through both having uh, sculpture and nature interact so that you have that combination of creativity both uh, organically and creatively. So, and you guys were very kind to allow us to have a three-year loan from Miss uh, Catherine Lee. Uh, and then now here today, we'll go to the presentation, but we're asking if you would allow us to add a sculpture to the park, which is by James Searles. James Searles grew up, I'm gonna get this wrong, I feel like it's Temple, Texas, or Tyler, Texas? I get those confused. The roses are not the roses, but- um, Tyler, Tyler's roses. Yes, I know, but I'm not gonna remember which one he's oh. from. Uh, so he's been around for a long time. He uh, is a Texas artist. You may be familiar with one of his pieces that's downtown on Main Street. They put that uh, roundabout on Main, over by uh, Baptist Hospital, the library, and then go down towards downtown, they put down so there's one there. So he uses kind of, his idea is, to, and you'll see images, his idea is to take organic uh, shapes, as like plant shapes, and, and that's what he does, he does for sculpture. Mm -hmm. And he's been around for a long time. He's one of our, he's one of our uh, master uh, sculptors here in Texas. Uh, he's uh, been collected by many, many uh, institutions, including the uh, Houston Art, Art Museum. Uh, I think the McNay has one. Uh, I think the I think Sama has one. Uh, but they're not, they're small. They're not in a space where you can feel it and move through it. And, uh, and I think, you know, this park particularly is all the amazing trees and the fact that you can move through that park in a way 
that isn't square. I mean, I was, you know, parks are always start with a, with sometimes like a plaza or something that you intersect it in certain ways. And that, that linear uh, way that moves because of the, because of the safety of the history of that uh, is just amazing to me. And I'm also an artist, so I might get a little too poetic. <laughs> Please stop. Thank so that, any other questions before I start? So uh, this presentation was put together by Anne Cecile. I, he's in Berlin, and he's, a, he's also an artist in town. I am going to try to channel him. So, uh, so that's us. So part of the thing was the emphasis of Listen to This to Start as a nonprofit foundation is all the amazing things that happened in Hemsworth uh, Plaza or Hemsworth Park. Sorry, during the '68 World's Fair, we had art from all over the world. We still have some of that still in San Antonio today. There's a, a Tony Smith that's at the McNay, uh, a big Q. But anyway, so we'll start our presentation. So that's, uh oh, she went the wrong way. So here's 68, mm -hmm. and we had lots of people coming through from all over the world. And this is an umlaut culture that I think still resides, or parts of it or something similar to it still resides in the Woody. So, uh, so we still have some of these treasures. Uh, there's Hemisphere, of course, and that was, that was done by an artist, uh, Robert Indiana. You may know that McNay has a piece on their patio that says love. That's Robert Indiana, and he actually made the uh, poster for Hemisphere. So, so the idea that Accenture has a history of having, you know, artists from this echelon all the way through, including the incredible uh, creative community we have here. So that is our Tony Smith. Uh, an interesting, I worked at the McNay for 13 years also, so <laughs> I always wanted to see if we could sell tickets to have Tony Smith come help us wash this. Was, <laughs> when we washed this thing, it was like washing a mag truck. We had to climb on it and start from the bottom down. This is a Catherine Lee. So they also have a Catherine Lee. So we're a good company as a, anyway, as a art collectors, and I guess in a sense, or art borrowers. Uh, this Tony Smith is a legend that uh, the 68 World's Fair, you know, they were like, okay, it's over, let's dismantle all these things, and some of you may have heard this, this legend. Uh, so the workers came in, this is, I will tell you, this is three quarter inch steel, because I climbed on it. Uh, they took it apart and made uh, barbecue pits and ice chests out of it. And I wish I had one of those today, because that is a collector's item. So the McNay, when they chose to uh, have it as a part of the collection, I think they, did, they made a deal with, I think, actually, I think Robert Tobin paid for it to be redone. So that's why we have a 27 cent. But I like that combination of the way we live and the way we live, right? <laughs> So this is a this is a Richard Sir, Searles, I'm sorry, Richard Serra's piece, and we're just showing you these are the, the parts that we are showing you here now is it's called uh, we're taking excerpts excerpts from a Storm Key, which is a huge sculpture park uh, that goes for I think 23 to 30 acres and just rolls down the hills and it's in it's in uh, Upper State New York. But this is the, some of the things that we looked at. To kind of inspire and figure out what we, how we wanted to move as a foundation. So we're just going to move through some pieces. And I don't know everybody's piece, but I think this might be. It doesn't seem like it has color, but it could be. Uh, no, I'm not even going to pretend I know. And these are Barbara Hepworths. These are also a collection from. Uh, well, we don't collect these, but the McNay has a Barbara Hepworth that was given to them by. Uh, Tom Slick uh, that uh, started the Mind Science Center and was an adventurous gentleman. So look at this beautiful thing. It looks like it was there forever, and I'm not, I don't know the artist, I'm sorry. But look at that. Isn't that great? Just the winding of the path. Smithson, but uh, 
these are slate pieces that are put down the ground as a as a bond for walking. I don't know this one, I'm sorry. This that I know is this and this is this is the piece that's in the vanilla. But these are the kinds of things that can happen in the park depending on what we what comes to us. Uh, we raise money to, to we we raise money to continually hopefully to have a movie uh, exhibition, so nothing's permanent. At the moment, we have agreements with the artists to have three-year lots, because we figured that way we could get an idea whether everybody is interested in how this works and how it's working. I mean, we're in it together as a, a, a cultural and creative experiment, right? Oops, I'm sorry. I'm going backwards. So this one, is Ann Wallace, a local artist, who we all love and know, well I do, she's almost like a sister to me. But uh, this is a back of Brackenridge Park, which you of course all know, I'm sure. Uh, but these are the, you know, Ann was looking at, of course, nature and how it was dissected later. So this is Catherine Lee, and she's been, she was very generous to us to let us go through her studio and offer us works. And she's in Wimberley, and at some point, We'll arrange something so we can all, whoever wants to go. She's so kind to, oops, I'm sorry. I don't have control. This is also her studio. And then we move to the park. So this is just the way the park exists now. Here's our path and these over here. And I'm not quite sure, this is just Anson putting together a way of people interacting with these pieces. So when we talk to Catherine, we just put them in, this is a Photoshop in, when we present it to you. And then she came out and placed them in the places. Well, this is her, where this is her talking to us about her pieces. These are wall pieces. She has a, she, uh, Sam had just acquired a piece of hers. That's Catherine again. And that's Roddy Robinson who runs Art Facebook. Oh, my goodness, it's fast. Right. That's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. We'll go back. That's Catherine. This is me and my team putting them in. That was a fun day. Cold. It was cold. But better than sweating, because I just sweated all day today. So. But you were kind enough to do that. Catherine has this idea when we finally do have some kind of PR public uh, event for these. They're hollow. She wants a musician to come and play them. Uh, How much do they weigh? They weigh about uh, three, 350, something like that. Not to pick up by yourself, but. Not too bad, they're hollow. But I think that they look lovely there, personally, and the way she plays them, they almost seem feel like they're dancing. Okay, so this is Mr. Searles. I can read that to you, but you know how bad I am at that. So, Terrell, Texas. Terrell. So he's been around a while, and he's been a, a quite a great influence in Houston particularly, and uh, he has collected, as you can see, pretty extensively all over the world. So this is an example of his works. And you can see that most of these are interior, except for, of course, this one. Still some of his work. And you can see scale, too, because there he is. And he's not a short, he's, he's like a six, six foot something guy. And this is the piece we are proposing for. This is actually coming as a, it's coming as a loan from the Rockport uh, Museum, or so it's Art Association. And they are willing to lend it to us for three years. So that's the, the, where it is in Rockport. You can see the dimensions. I think the white, even though it's very, very, very organic, up against the green and the, and the branches of the trees would be really lovely. It's like a reverse line drawing of some sort, right? So here, here's the location we're proposing. And that's the apologies because somebody was already out there looking around. Uh, Could you go back to that, please? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. The fountain's in the front left. And no, the it's not very far. Right at the top of the hill. Yeah, it's not very far from the Catholic League. It's maybe like maybe a block, if you have like a proper city, you know, like the city block is okay, I, 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 I found it. Like six houses there. And there's the location if you look at it. 
Is that what the guy was out there underneath the yes. thing hacking away today? Yes. Um, my apologies. That was my mistake. Uh, I thought yeah. things were further along. What was he? Was we stopped it. We stopped it. Something? He was, oh. he was clearing the site. And I, I, like I said, again, I apologize. And I, that was a misunderstanding. Sorry. And yeah. that's the piece there. That's yes. the piece there. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, it's nice to see what they're planning. How big is that piece? Uh, well, there eight, is, uh, eight, eight, eight feet tall by six feet wide. That's the location. It was being gingerly. And uh, from the sidewalk, uh, do you have any dimensions in the area exactly? Can you go back again? I'll see how far that is. From the sidewalk. Because that goes it down, be, it goes down in the center. Yes. Nestled, I'm sorry, nestled the coach. Okay, I'm going to say the coach is trying to close to the sidewalk. Yeah. Well, there is no sidewalk there. Yeah, it's on the side of the Oh, that's true. That's that's yeah. a walk. That's a walking trail. Yeah, that's right. So that helps it all a little more like that. Okay, so I see. Thank you. Question? Yes, sir. So, so it's in the no low zone. Yes, it is in the no low zone. And, and that we, if we get approval, I don't know how to stop that, but there'd be footings up so the flowers could grow around it. So the footings would keep it from being, you know, right on the ground. So there'd be footings up about six inches or so, six, eight inches. So it'd be standing above and within the. How many posts or feet do you think it'll have? It'll have uh, five, five points. Okay. Five points. And then each diameter? They're eight inch diameter. And then it, there's a plate on this side of it that's a, uh, and I'm not, I may get this right or wrong, but it's uh, 12 inches by eight inches. So I suppose that'll encourage people to trample the flowers to go and take pictures of them. Well, that is a question. It just looks like it's pretty close to the street. So I won't be she said it's out of the flow zone. It's in the no zone. It's in the, the no zone as well. Flowers. That they would trample things if it's in the no zone. Also, that that presentation. Yes, sir. we're ready to discuss it. my comments. Okay. I was giving my comments. Uh, first of all, the one you have at the top of the hill, we did not approve it. Maple Park Board approved it. Okay. And they just kind of came in and said, we're putting this at the top of the hill. Okay. Okay, so it came in as a surprise. Um, it, was in the, it was in the bulletin. That's when I found out about it. It was actually, um, my recollection is, is that they asked us for input, but my understanding from what the foundation that they got together to propose this had indicated to us that um, they could proceed with city park approval only. Oh. And so they asked us for, for input, um, okay. which we gave, but well, I, I that was approved it. by the city that's, park. That's we, my point is yeah. Yeah, that is one that's that's the second point here. is um, a lot of these angles were much larger open areas. Main Park was a very limited area. And I understand uh, what artists are trying to do. Artists are trying to find a place to put their art. That's my next point. Uh, we've gone from one, we're going to two. How far are we going in this in Main Park? I mean, are you going to put art all the way down? to Breckenridge? Is there going to be a connection? How far, how many pieces of art are they expecting to put in this park? We need a number. I, I doubt if you stop, I doubt if you're stopping at two. Something just tells me there's going to be one, then there's going to be two, then there's going to be three, then there's going to be four, and it's going to continue. That's just my guessing, of course. Um, third point is, uh, personally, I'm not personally attracted to this type of art. I mean, that's just a personal opinion. Some people may think it's gorgeous. I personally don't like the art. I'm not terribly happy with the ones that put at the top of the hill. They just look like geometric shapes to me. You know, 
So, I mean, you can like it or you might like it. Um, I'm glad that you brought this to show us what you're planning to put there, because when the top ones were at the top of the hill, I had no idea. All I knew was art was coming, I didn't know what. And again, it could be a miscommunication somewhere. It's all about communicating. Um, I'm just reluctant to go from uh, one piece to two piece to where is this going? Because it boils down to, you have artists, they want a place to put art. And they found Mankey Park, and all of a sudden Mankey Park is becoming our art display place. Uh, well, well, so that's just the way I see it. So everybody else can comment the way they wish. Rick, uh, there has been discussion that they're trying to create an outside art museum or sculpture museum from Broadway to Botanical Gardens. Okay, well, that's new to me too. Yeah, well, it's all in discussion. Okay. And it's part of the, like, the Broadway expansion and the museum reach and all of that sort of to bring culture and artwork of various natures. Uh, see, I understand and they're, that. You're not, you're they're not going to call it an uh, outside uh, sculpture museum. So your points are about how many pieces we will have or would like to have in the park. So I think that we had a meeting uh, last week to discuss that issue uh, specifically. So the next step for us will be to have a, a master plan uh, exercise uh, between Tresenturias and Mankey Park. So we can start mapping exactly if we, as we do acquire more art, where would it go? How many pieces can well, you make art? Well, you more art because you have a lot of artists who want to display art. Right, but the artists are, are not coming to us. We're going to them. We're finding pieces that we want in the <laughs> art. We, it's not an open call for artwork. Well, I'm just looking at dimensions. You have one at the top of the hill, and your next one is only about, what, six houses down? You have a lot, you have a, if, if they're going to do it evenly spaced in Mankey Park, I'm seeing 10, 12 pieces of art. Not that you're going to do them evenly spaced, but I just, that's just what I say. Right. You haven't gone very far for your next piece. Don't no. tell me you're going to go to the other end of the park and put the next one there and then you're done. Somebody just tell me it's just going to piece after piece after piece after piece. I just said I that. personally, <laughs> well, you don't have, but you don't have a number to give me. No, no, because no, we're, okay. we're just working on the master right. plan now to bring okay. to you. So you're on, piece, just, you're on these two. I will, sir, also remind you that these are just loans. For three years. Right. And now, then, you when know, the top then, one at the top of the hill is up for three years, are you going to put something else there in its place? That would probably, yeah, no, that would be, probably be placed place with another piece of paper. I, I, that's not what we were See, planning. that's another question. That's right. my well, question. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's sort of the discussion. And once Mankey Park becomes a place for artwork, it will continue to be a place for artwork. I'm guessing, and again, again, I'm guessing, because we don't have the answers to this, it's just going to rotate. It's just going to rotate different pieces of artwork because Mankey Park is now designated an art to play, a display a area, park. a sculpture park. park. Now, if everybody agrees to make Mankey Park a sculpture park, that's fine. Personally, I'm a garden of the uh, Mankey Park Community Garden. I'm on the board. Nature is my art. I don't need. I don't. I don't need it. I go to Mankey Park. Nature is my art. I feel the wind in my face. I feel the sun on my. You know. I see the ground. I don't need it. You're, you're. You're changing the natural sculpture of a natural area. Mankey Park was designated a natural area park, and you're changing it. So that's just me. Can we get a couple other comments. Sure. Thanks. Of course. Well, as someone who has frequented Storm King. Uh -huh. Pepsi oh, Lauer, wow. who is another sculpture. As someone who's frequented Storm King that you mentioned, PepsiCo Gardens in New York, and other beautiful sculpture gardens, I would say I find this very exciting and culturally very enriching. So just so you, you know, get that there is a different piece. Yes, sir. Sure. We've you. definitely heard that already, but thank you very much for your voice. Yes, ma'am. Well, I also love the wildflowers. To me, they're much more beautiful than any handmade sculpture. Okay. And I'm concerned with sculptures, then people are going to be walking to them. They're going to be trampling the, the wildflowers. And we already have some of this. This year, there were some people that came with furniture to me. And there was another place that looked like a herd of elephants had trampled the blue bar. So I'm thinking that people are going to, and also, if they're going to come to walk through this, where are they going to park? And my third thing is, um, so who, who actually it decides on this. Who has the power of making that sort of decision? It sounds like from the other ones, maybe 
we don't even have any Well, ultimately, the Parks Department has final say. Who does? The Parks Department. So they greenlighted this project months ago, but we came to Mankey Park. I'm a resident of Mankey Park. I've been on the board before. So we came to the board to let them know what could be done and how they wanted it done. So there was input from Mankey Park Board at that time to proceed and in what fashion we would proceed. So that's how, that's how it all played out, so to speak. Yes, ma'am. Just a comment or two. So I'm hearing, I mean, I, I like art, kind of like you, on, you know, what, whatever art is. And um, the city buys the sculptures. No. Okay, you said no. that was acquired from the Colorado. This is a, a, a loan. So that means loan. That's well, that's good. We're not paying anything. Okay, okay, and then if we. Huh? No, that's, I was just wondering if it's taxpayer money on part So now. He makes a very valid point because there's an argument still we're going to make um, Funston one way towards botanical coming around Lamar, the in and out. I don't like that at all. You talk about disturbing the look and feel of a neighborhood with a one-way traffic pattern. And we have parking problems in Mankey Park. Now Gary made a point that maybe they could park at the botanical center because they have all that um, parking area that's usually not full because it would be, i.e., ultimately a tourist attraction, which has pluses and minuses. So, I mean, you know, I'm up for stuff. I, I like culture myself. I love the wallflowers, you know, and I uh, went to Lamar and learned them there. But, um, I mean, I'm just, the Parks and Recreation, in other words, has final say. So unless you have representation on it, you, you, you forget it. Right, wrong, or indifferent, like it or not like it. They, well, they decide that's, that's but what they're being polite. It doesn't matter what we think. Yeah. Well, that, that's not exactly exactly true. Oh, tell so us how that's why we're here to have this open dialogue, and that's why we want you guys to be a part of the master plan, so that you can give us this feedback, so that we don't go plunk something down where you don't want it. And more than likely, we're not going to want to plunk it down right in the middle of a bunch of wildflowers either. So that's what the whole master plan process is about: is identifying the best spaces to place new art. Um, I, I personally like the idea of having art, um, but I, I know that there is a lot of enthusiasm and sensitivity about the wildflowers, especially those that are planted or reseeded every year in memory of uh, deceased residents. And so, um, and I think there's some uh, particular areas that are kind of more designated for that purpose than others. And I think that it would be best if you would avoid those more sensitive areas. That would be the first priority yes, on the master plan. Yes. Yes. I would be to identify all those places. Actually, Excuse now, me a second. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Would be to identify those places where we would not want to put art. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and then plan accordingly. So it's a thoughtful process. Sir. This would be a good time to do that because the, the pattern of, of mowing is, is the yeah. same every year. And so so there, there's the upper level of the park, uh, you know, to the, uh, just to the uh, west of the Crescent, and there's a big area that's a no-mo area, and then down close to my house, uh, there's a, a no-mo area going down to the drainage area. Yeah. And then, but, but since they haven't noted yet, you can yeah. see it right you now. You can see the pattern. So yeah. I, I want to get with Justin. I know he has a drone and pick up a flyover for us so that we can see exactly where planting areas are right now. Yeah, but, but because the, this year the wildflowers were really great, but they got up to about four feet tall. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of putting that in an area where, where it'd be half, almost half covered up. It's not it's maybe the best place to do it. Right. And especially where you mentioned the guy was hacking away on yes. the walker. So and maybe if you go into a different spot where you yeah. don't have and that situation. We can do that. Yes, ma'am. So I'm in a peculiar position here because I'm a resident of the neighborhood, but I'm also a journalist, and I tend to, as a journalist, just shut up and listen. But in this case, I'm very curious about how this process conformed with the city's public participation guidelines that were passed by the city council in terms of public input and public participation in this decision. It doesn't sound like it met with those guidelines. Well, in my point of view, the board is your representation. I mean, that's why they're here. 
Yes, that's they, exactly they right. Speak, they that's speak for you. You've elected them, and they speak for you. I mean, we can't have everybody in Mankey Park flow into one building and have a discussion and make a decision. That's what a board is for. So well, who that's what we went to. Who are representing us on this situation? The, 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 to come about. The installation itself was actually late in arriving and the previous board and the current board have been alerted to its slow movement. We're really glad to have them here and we're excited to present what's going on. So. Louder, louder. Over a year ago, wasn't it? Well over a year ago. Yeah. And we had uh, the land use committee and the board all come together. Uh, I don't know if you folks know who's on the land use committee. Uh, but there was at least four members of the land use committee and the board. Uh, we had a joint meeting and we got the thumbs up to go ahead. So that's what we did. Um, so I believe that there was community uh, participation throughout the entire process, although it was not needed um, to satisfy the Parks Department requirements. That was something that we did uh, to get more input and make it more of uh, a cohesive decision. And in this new phase, we brought this to you now before it's installed so we can get more feedback than we had for the first installment. Since we also have more information as a board now than we did previously. I think it is the indication because, like I said, when the first one came in, I was totally aware of it. I saw it in the neighborhood news that we have part of coming here. That's coming next month. That's when I first heard about it. Yes, ma'am. What happened to that park being a natural park. I mean, how come sculptures can go in and you won't even put stones along the sidewalk for people to have respite seating when they're trying to go from the bus on Broadway to the bus on New Braunfels or trying to walk dogs and my back kills me and there's no place to sit. But that's a side issue. The, What's there, what's been placed there, I think is questionable. But, but to just make it into a sculpture garden when it's a, so, supposed to be a natural park and that's in the neighborhood plan and it's been like this for, I don't know, 100 years probably. I don't, I don't understand the, um, they are well, temporary. There are, the reasoning. Uh, there are a few misconceptions about what exactly is the park supposed to remain. It's not supposed to be quote unquote developed, but there's a, a large interpretation of what that actually means to a lot of different people. And as far as the parks department is concerned, it does not mean uh, adding uh, sculpture violates the spirit of that agreement. So um, that was one of the first hurdles that, that we discussed with the board and, and beyond with the city as well. So, your question. Uh, let's make sure I just need to Has there been a master plan done for Mankey Park? For the park from itself? From the city of San Antonio? From the park no, no, there was one master plan that was done from a UTSA grad student um, about a year and a half ago. Uh, we have a on, on, on uh, Facebook. Um, and that just showed in a very wide range of possibilities. And we have been directly involved with the project that happened at Big Whitney Park, and it was a great example in which the neighborhood got together and discussed what they wanted from the park and worked together with the city of San Antonio Department to develop a master plan and acquire bond money for projects and you know, move forward from that. But it seems as if Mickey Park hasn't had that, and so there hasn't been community input on what exactly, there's a lot of voices about it remaining a nature park, but there's never been anything formally done on it, correct? I would agree with that. Correct. And, and that's what the master plan will bring out. We can, we can investigate all the uh, intricacies of this agreement that's 100 and some odd years old, and see exactly what it says, what we can and cannot do, uh, so that everybody is in the know. I, I believe, in the neighborhood plan, 
which had broad community input, um, it, there was a stated desire to um, enhance the presence of artwork in the neighborhood, if not in the park specifically. Um, so that should also be. But that goes back to number. Because somebody keeps giving a number of how many pieces of this art they plan to be in. That will cease. Nobody can give you a number. No, it's like the same way. That's part of the plan. You understand the sequence. We don't have a number because we don't have a master plan yet. Well, we need one. So we need that before we need to start putting the art in the art. give you the number. And that's where we are right now. I know, but they're already putting the art in before the plan is made, is my point. The art is coming in, you're kind of planning, and you put the art in and you say, oh, we're going to make a plan, but the plan's not made. We have a plan that says we're going to put one here, and here, and here, and here, and there. At least I know there's going to be four, or there's going to be ten, or there's going to be fifty. Could somebody please give me a number? We definitely have a conversation starter with this installation. <laughs> and I know as many voices that are here represented as not liking what is there, there are just as many, if not more, who are really glad to see something happening in this completely underutilized I would say I didn't like it. I'm just saying I need a plan. I just need more than just saying we're going to put a piece of artwork here. It's an unknown quantity. It's been noted. That's, that's the part of the plan. That's the part of the plan. It's been noted and addressed. Yeah. 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 It's not like we're destroying it. These are temporary sculptures, and it's kind of an experiment. It's a gift. But that goes back to, that's, that goes and back to three years gift. But, but are they going to replace it with new art? Is it going to move on? Is well, that's hard. Yeah. Isn't that the discussion, Steve? Of course it is. Of course it is. Well, well, we'll see what it feels like. Sir, I can tell you, sir, excuse me, just from the installations that I've done and did, both, both in May and where I did up at the top of the hill with the Catholic East, those footings will go out because they don't fit any other art. They're specifically made for the pieces that are going in. So they don't work for anything. So they would go away. So the poor concrete will be done up. Yes. <laughs> well, it, you know, they, that's the whole point. Can you tell how deep the footing is? Not just the, footing, the footing is eight inches. There's only four inches in the ground. So it's not like we're destroying the landscape. It's four inches in the ground. Yes, ma'am. I just want to say thank you very much for bringing this great presentation, and I love, I love interaction. And what George said just a minute ago is very important. While we can look at the flower patterns and the growths and this and that, if we don't do that now, right. then your plan won't work at all because it destroys a natural. And that's why we're here. Yes, and, and I want to know who's going to be on that committee so we make sure it's covered. George, can you be on that committee? We've got a lot of volunteers here. Right. Right. <laughs> My question is with the discussions that are happening, excuse me, with the questions that are happening, the discussions that are happening related to the city's long term plan to increase town activity with Rockridge Park and Blue Hole, um, how would a master plan that went through all the public participation principles and went through the typical stakeholder process of the city's been using for regional planning, et cetera, fit in with the other layers of planning that are going on with the new regional planning system. Uh, the park has final, the parks department has final input and they do develop this master plan in the direction that they're going. Where does it fit in with the corridor plan and the midtown plan and the other projects that are going on because those processes are already started? Right. Well, I think that everybody here would like to see some type of better connection between Mangy Park and Breckenridge Park. You know, if you if you're, if you're walking with your dogs or your family and you want to get across Broadway to enjoy both of these jewels that we have right next to each other, but you have this huge barrier to Broadway that really makes it an uncomfortable uh, area to navigate if you have your family, pets, and whatever. So I think that that would be one of the priorities that we would discuss going forward in integrating those plans is how do we get more people safely across Broadway much better environment. So Broadway is supposed to be narrowing. There's supposed to be trees. We're using lanes, all that. So that in itself is going to slow traffic down. Uh, it may make it more congested, but at least it'll be slower. So I think for Mankey Park, we should be definitely involved in that process and figuring out what works for us as we try to connect these two green spots. Green 
space. Uh, Susan, you mentioned the master plan being the next step. Has the Parks Department initiated that process or have there been conversations about no. it happening? No, it's really not a Parks Department exercise. It's okay. more of an internal exercise to get feedback from any part as so we move forward. Can you explain a little bit more of the relationship between Trace and Torius and the Parks Department and how this original project and installment we were completely unknown to the Parks Department. Okay. Uh, we basically submitted an application and opened up the dialogue between the two parties and came to an agreement rather quickly. Okay. Right. I think it's misstated that you're saying you're connecting Brecker Ridge Park with Maple Park. It would be you're nice connecting to Broadway with the Botanical Gardens. And that's the that's the lead into the main entrance, and that's why the art is being put there. At least well, in my in, in my view. This is separate from view. this art situation. So the city as a whole, the concept that's being I know what the concept is to right. connect Broadway with the right. Botanical Gardens. So that's why the, the way that it's being way. framed yeah. at this particular moment from the city's perspective is connecting Brackenridge which makes it part of the Botanical Gardens, and so this application may have been received because it fits with that plan, we don't know that, but that's just something to be aware of that all of these layers of planning are going on at various stages. Yes. Uh, one comment. Um, if you're getting traffic, because it would be kind of an outside gap, this is just comments. I'm, I'm very proud that our park is never full of trash. It's, it's clean. Thank you. I pick it up every day. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> every Ray. morning, the whole park. I want you to know I heard the whole room's worth plus really appreciate that but if you get more traffic it's going to be more popular to me it comes down to a usage like we don't put up things for barbecues you can't have food or drink stands I mean I know a couple of the rules I'm not an expert on it but I mean it kind of excited me one day when I was at, 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 at my place on Funston where people brought their mats to exercise in the park mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's a use. That's something where people can get together. No, they don't have drinks. We don't have, a, do we have a water fountain? I don't think we have a drink. Yes, use there are a drink use fountain. I brought one. Well, I'll look for that. And trash cans then become also another uh, thing. And then who's going to empty them? And thank you for letting me comment. That's all There's I have. Plenty I, of trash really, cans in I really appreciate y'all coming. We were just, I guess, not ready for this presentation. We, but it was a great one. And is there anything besides modern art y'all can put in there? I'm sorry. 300 years is 300 years of all kinds of stuff. Why is it just, you know, why is it? Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, Morgan has the board. I wanted to also mention that, you know, the recent goals of some of the more recent boards have been to connect more community actions together. So we are now meeting here at Lamar. We're trying to have different events afterwards. You know, we've historically dealt with a lot of development and just fighting over things. And this is an opportunity for something that we can all have in common, a gathering place. Maybe we can start to use it more instead of it just being an underutilized space. So I see this as a positive thing. And yes, it is temporary. And yes, we cannot make everyone happy. But I would hope that we can kind of look at it as a whole. Maybe they gave us some designer art well, I hope bitches. That's not a comment. Uh, I use the park every day, so uh, you know under I don't buy this underutilized thing. I I use it every day. I know other people that use it every day. Families that walk there, individuals that walk there, people who walk their dogs, um, people who look at the flowers in the park and appreciate that it's wild, and like to think of it as the last little bit of country in the middle of the city. Um, I don't think of it as a space to put stuff and I'm concerned that in looking for spaces to put things that our park got chosen uh, I'm I'm kind of tired of all the new stuff and all the encroachment on the neighborhood that the city of San Antonio has encouraged beginning with the pearl it's it has a lot to do with money and not that much to do with neighborhood Profits first, second. Um, did, are there any other? I know you use it every day. I do. Yes. Are there any other comments about use in the park or <coughs> ideas for use in the park? I know people of varying opinions have expressed 
a desire for some benches and at least crushed granite path on the side of the park that is if they want to do something, you need to finish the pathway on the Clemson side. Are there any Agreed. other priorities or concerns? Yes, she has a, a comment she'd like to make. Oh, I, I just said I'd like single benches, not sleeping benches. Because we don't need that, thank you. Because we will have sleeping in the park. That's, another, That's a great comment. Another issue. I just wanted to clarify, I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean underutilized by individuals. But I can't, I've taken my kids over there and we've walked in the park and walked with the dog. But if we're going to a park, we're going to cross Broadway and go to Brackenridge. I just mean as a community gathering spot. We're not going to get a bunch of our neighbors and say, hey, let's all go hang out and make a park. This is what I mean by that. Yeah, I think, I know we're in New York, but park where three years of the council haven't been here for a long time. And we do have a lot of friends in the neighborhood who couldn't make it tonight, but I know feel somewhere with these young kids that. I have never been able to take my kids there to play in the park because people would be upset if my two-year-old were in tranquil flowers, which are beautiful, but he still he doesn't understand that. And so, you know, not allowing connectivity like between Bradford and Mickey Park, we now have to cross in front of the busy street to walk into a different area and neighborhood to go to a playground or a field where my kid can play at because it's underutilized from that perspective for a different, different demographic. And my point would be that Breckenridge Park is, uh, Maggie Park is here and Breckenridge Park is here. Why don't you go to Breckenridge Park? I mean, it's a 100 acre park. We do. Why? Yeah, we do. Okay. Well, so do I. I walk my dog in Maggie Park and I cross the street and I go to Breckenridge. And I it's totally understand, I totally understand that crossing Breckenridge is a problem. The light's too long. It's but that's dangerous to some point. <laughs> but, it, but it does have, it does have benches. It does have a kiddie playground. It needs a dog park, but let's not even go there. Um, you know. And there are other there are other green spaces in, in um, Maggie Park besides Maggie Park that are empty green spaces that perhaps some of this art will look better in. Than, than, but I still think they're trying to they're trying to do the connection, and I understand it. I'm not arguing with it. But there are other green spaces in Maggie Park as well. To be considered that are empty, unused spaces they or a piece of art with great. Okay. Yes. I can just see that one suggestion is that if there is going to be a structure in the, in the park to have a path, so maybe people wouldn't just walk over the wallflowers and tramp them down. Everybody will stay on the path, but it's nice a way to make That's it more walkable. It's a great point. And, and on that, that it's, it's, it's it's not people that are going to walk the path to look at a piece of art. They're going to drive by on yeah, part of it, punch in and look at it. They're not going to get out of their car and look at a piece of art. They're going to drive by and look at it. Maybe park is used by walkers. They're not walking it to look at the arts. They're walking it because they're walking their dogs. So they're walking. Growing up on the, the art's going to be there the way it is now for people to drive. They're driving by and looking at it. Have any other comments? I bet y'all want to come next year. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Democracy in Action. I mean, you can't wait to come to We're not arguing. Yes, yes, yes. yes, you mentioned something before our meeting. Are there going to be a, like plexiglass uh, okay. yes. titles? Yes. yes. We're, We're, still working on that. We're trying to figure out some better lighting situation as well for the ones on the top. Something that's nice, small, sensitive. A little bit more effective than what we have. And they're already misplaced out of our place. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
project before I do. Um, but for internal purposes, um, if you have interest in that, and then uh, I wasn't able to pull up some of the um, resources I received from various people who've been involved in the Midtown Plan and Broadway Corridor Plan process, but I do have some information and images about what city documents are being produced related to plans to connect them that I'd be happy to share um, so that we're more informed of the overall planning you know process. I can email them. Um, I don't know if we have email address spaces on the back, but since I have all this information, if people who want to receive an email on this information, we just write it on the street. And the grad student plan, is that just something you did or something that was requested? Um, probably can speak to that a little bit more. I wasn't on the board, Daniel. I wasn't on the board at the time. Um, this was a graduate student at UK State? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So we'll I've already tried to email her and see if she wants to be part of the discussion again. Uh, she declined last time, but I just thought it might be good to have her input if it was her vision for the entire park. Obviously, we're not going to do or execute her entire vision, but she has a, a lot of history that she gathered, uh, and a lot of cognitive thinking and creative thinking went into that plan that she did. So I thought it would be a really good Was she an art major? Or no, she's an urban planning major. Urban plan. starting. We've, yes, we've also we've been working um, for quite some time to look at the agreement um, that was originally made when the, the land was given by George Brackenridge um, and some of the previous plans to sort of make a white paper of this information for people to look at and see what's allowed and what isn't and what currently has been planned over time. Um, so that's an ongoing project that. Have that we have that we have to post this new website. Um, the neighborhood associations are working well are aware. So, Kevin, okay, yes. What is the mechanism for the city park board or whoever it is? That... I am still trying to figure that out, <laughs> which is why I was asking some of those questions. Yeah, um, not in a necessarily yes. cynical way, but just because it isn't super clear to me as yeah. I've been attending all these meetings. Yeah. You know how that has worked over time, or now that they've kind of, especially. Recently, even the public participation law was passed, and ordinance was passed, and the switch to this regional planning model is relatively new. So there's still a lot of education the city is trying to do or not trying to do, depending on your perspective, about how those plans interact and fix to be involved. And so getting to the bottom of that is part of this. I would highly suggest reaching out to the new regional association just to that process. Great recommendation. Always yeah, we will definitely do that so we can give some more information about what that master plan process looks like and see if it's great for us. But it has to be modern art, right? I love the bust of Mr. Mankey, you know, and something that states some little history, something. I don't, I don't, I don't think that we're married to that at all. Well, I, I'd like to suggest some other forms of okay. bust, a little history lesson. A little bit. Uh, it's the rock. <laughs> it's it's the rock. rock. I I rock. rock. Oh, oh, let's get the pictures. Um, and if you have additional thoughts or comments that you want to email to, oh, to the board, you know, we can definitely start working on what this looks like. Um, Mr. Uresti is here from Representative Urban Hawkins office with some updates for us. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. No, I said, I, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm very envious of what y'all are, what y'all do here and all the associations uh, throughout San Antonio that I visited. Because uh, in, in, my, in my part of town, we don't, we don't have a neighborhood association. And my we have a piece of art right now, but you don't see it, y'all probably put a chain to it and it down. Because uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a full the process. Uh, the uh, session is over, as y'all know. The 140 days are over, so uh, Representative Governor Hawkins is taking about a week off, and then she's going to be opening up the new office and we'll be able to contact us through there. Uh, meanwhile, you all have my, my contact information. Uh, as far as legislation that was passed, there are two major things I want to touch on real quick. It's, of course, the school funding. It's going to vary throughout the different districts in, in San Antonio. Um, some districts are going to receive $34 million, and we're going to receive an additional $12 million. Uh, some districts like Elmo Heights will not have to give it back as they normally do, but they will keep the overflow that they have. So it's, it's going to be a benefit for everybody from all the way across the board. Uh, a tremendous amount of money was put into, of course, public education, mental health, 
Uh, and the piece of legislation that the, the representative worked on is a great, unfortunate piece of legislation, but she, she, it, was, it was needed. And, and, and unfortunately, because of what's happening now in our world, uh, one of the, the piece of legislation that she, that she passed, and there's going to be a, a signing deal with the governor down here in San Antonio, is a bleeding kit that's going to be installed in all schools. Uh, a bleeding kit. And again, it's unfortunate, to, but it's something that had to be because of what's happened. In our uh, and it's in order so children and students will be able to learn how to utilize this equipment uh, in case of, of, of something major would happen in one of our schools. Uh, again, it's very unfortunate, but it's a step that had to be taken. And the representative stepped up to do this. Uh, what she did wasn't, wasn't able to get, and she's looking to do an next session, was to have chips installed in each one of these in each one of these kits, so that if there was a shooting and our first responders had to get there, they'll know where that bleeding kit is and where that injured individual is at to get to that person. It's sad. Sometimes it's I mean it's it's worse than sad, but it, but it had to be done. It's something that that the, both sides of the aisle agreed on getting it done, and uh, you know, I don't think anybody's happy that that. that this piece of has that passed yet? Yes, ma'am. But a chip and all the kids? No, 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 chip. no, 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 chip. no. Chip is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time. No, it, but it is, there would be a chip inside the kit. So, yeah, that one is being used. I know, we were wondering. Oh, I'm sorry. So that they don't know where to go where that kid is being, that kit. Yeah. So they'll, know. Uh, so they'll know where to go when that kit is being used. And so that the, fire, the firefighters or first responders will know where to go. Uh, but that, that didn't get approved. That's going to go well probably next on the next uh, session. Uh, again, the school funding is a major issue that's gotten through. That's going to help Alamo Heights tremendously. Uh, it's going to help the other districts uh, tremendously. And what I've get, done, I've given... Um, that's okay. It's okay. Me. Given me, given me, uh, this, uh, the bills that were passed, uh, the, the important, most important piece of legislation. So hopefully she can upload them into, into your website, yes. and so everybody can get a copy of it. I can print them copies for everybody. Uh, and a, a, a personal big plus for me is that my wife starts teaching here this year. Here, almost. Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah, she's starting here this year. So, great. Uh, she's doing that. We ate down the street of Burger right before the right before the meeting. Uh, yeah. She wanted to show off her new school, so I already, I've already seen it, so. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you'll have my wife here, uh, Leslie Uresti. She'll be teaching her what grade? this year. Leslie Uresti. And what her grade. grade. Oh, she's teaching, uh, I think first grade. First grade? Yes, I think it's first grade. Uh, she's been teaching 25 years, so you're going to have a master teacher. It'll be a big plus for, for, for everybody. Um, so anyway, if there's any other questions for me, you have anything for me? I, I guess I do because I don't follow everything like I should. The sound bite on how this financial legislation, nobody cares what happens out of life, but the rest of the school districts, how does it benefit them? Well, San Antonio ISD, for example, is going to receive $34 million additional monies. From the state. From the state. And those monies, and rather than the original plan where they're going to give $5,000 to each teacher, is going to be left up, left up to the discretion of, of boards. To divvy up as it's because you still have your librarians, your paraprofessionals, your custodians, what have you. So, uh, the districts will be left up to them what to do. I just saw SAISD is doing an across the board raise for all permanent full time. They just came out with that. And yeah, they come, well, they're coming up with 3.5 percent, I think, is across the board with additional stipends that are being put in place. Also, it, it, it's, yeah. it's mixed up a little bit. And we need to pay our teachers better. They sure yeah, don't and I think they're adding, a, they're adding a, an additional 175 master teachers wow. also, which my wife is going to That's good. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's going to be each, each board, each district is going to, it's going to be up to their discretion and, and to decide where the money is going to go. Because How much federal funds involved in anything that supports the schools? Oh. A lot. You get, you get portions. You have to well, a lot. It, it gets, no, it gets no, portioned no, out. No, no, no. Yeah, on the average school district across Texas, about 7% of their revenue comes from the federal government. 7%? Yeah. It's, it's pretty Most of it comes from property taxes. That's what the majority of the district does. Yeah. So, 
there, again, there's a lot of legislation out there. There's thousands of pieces that were written that couldn't even begin to go over everything. So, but I wanted to touch on, on what what Governor Hawkins talked touched on when she spoke last. So I'm just kind of echoing what she said. And if you're interested in education issues, that's what our August meeting is going to be about. All right. Yes. What's okay. Next so month? we need your representative. Next month is going to be about public safety because we've had some oh, challenges. Oh, that start streets too. Mm -hmm. In the neighborhood in the last few. Um, I don't think. Oh, go ahead. Pardon. No, go ahead. Go, 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 go. I was just going to ask, when are you going to be discussing like the changes happening to Lower Broadway, Midtown? So that, that is late. the other reminder that I have. Um, the first public meeting related to the Lower Broadway changes that go with the bond project for 2017 to 2022 is happening. I, it's the 27th. I can't remember what day of the week it is. I posted like a, the photo of it and the event in the Facebook page. I haven't posted it to next door yet, um, but if you sign up on that email, I can certainly email you the specific information. It's their first public input meeting. A lot of the planning's already been done, and I did a request that some of the people involved with that come to this meeting, and they turned me down. They didn't want to present any neighborhood associations until after they have this first public meeting, but. If you're very invested or interested in that, it's a good one to attend because pretty much every group has anything to say about Broadway has been posting it on their Facebook pages and it's going to be there. So if you have an opinion, it's a good one to go to. So can you repost that on yes, the Facebook? Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, just one other thing, I'm, I'm going to go off for a second here. They, um, in property taxes, I know that that's just come up again right now. Uh, if you have a parent that you're taking care of their paperwork for them or for their for the property, even for your own, anybody that's 65 or older, they get the, the exemption for uh, the senior citizen uh, discount, uh, uh, exemption. What the Barrett Pistol District has been doing for many years, and people don't, a lot of people don't know this, is that they add a, a, a form in there that you have to fill out. Ask them, the, the question is, forget how it's worded, but something like, are you still over 65? Oh. And it's an affidavit form that you need to have signed by the race. Yes, and it's very important wow. because basically what they're asking are you still alive? <laughs> because some children keep yeah, the exemption. That's true. So, but and a lot of people just throw it in the trash. They say, well, why am I going to say I'm still over That's ridiculous. But if you don't fill it out, you lose your exemption. And who is it signed by? The person who is the owner and is over 65 with yes. the exemption. So spread the word to your, your friends, your neighbors, your parents. If you take care of your parents, you it yeah, and see this, this thing, but they don't send it to everybody. They only send it to certain areas, certain areas. So it's like a, a check or a So if you've ever gone to, so, and I can, if people are interested in this, since you mentioned this, I can post the form. It's available on the Bear County Appraisal District website. But if you purchased a new home or changed the title to your home or somebody who you received a home from dies and you inherit it, they will send you a property tax um, information form basically that has the ownership information and there's a section on it. I believe it's section. It's 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 random. random. There is no time. So you could get it. Yes, that's it is also available on the website. Yes. So double check. You, you never know you mail out some exemption. I know it's not this is not a state issue, but something I talk to my brother every day and we talk about these things, and, and I, I brought it up at every neighborhood association. You'd be surprised someone who got lost. Well, what can you look the form? Or what's the, the website? Or what? If you Bear, go to Bear County Appraisal District, dot, I believe it's a dot org address. Yes, the appraisal district, yeah, not the, not the tax yeah. Um, It is click on the just add a question to the tax form? I'm sorry? Why don't they just add a question to the form on which you pay your tax? And I send, again, they send them out randomly. If they see it's a separate form. Uh, I haven't seen the form, but I know it's been in there for, for a long time. It'll be two pages. I just wanted to bring it up because, you know, I, I something that I talk about. So I, I like to keep people informed. And, and, and y'all do a great job of spreading the word. So if any of the, we get the word out, it's going to be y'all. It's form 50 114. It's the residence homestead exemption application. It's the first form that comes up if you search the website. If you need help filling it out, I did it like all the time in my last job. So now this may be my last meeting. I don't know yet. I'm going to meet with the representative this week. Is where she wants me to go now. So if it is my last meeting, thank you very much for having me last meeting this time. Where do we have your information? I'm you have my cell phone number. I know. I gave you call me again, so I got it. Oh. Okay. Call me. So yes. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm sorry, Miss Senator Menendez's office. I couldn't find you all. 
Hi, um, my name is Ana Alicia Romero with Senator Menendez's office. It's good to see you all again. Uh, and are you all ready to go? So, uh, Senator Menendez will be giving uh, legislative briefings uh, across this, the district. So, we have four scheduled across Senate District 26. Uh, the first one will be next Wednesday. If you'd like to take one and pass it on, uh, Senate District 26. Um, next Wednesday, 6.15 p.m., you see all the dates there. Probably the closest one to you physically is the one um, at the Education Service Center, Region 20, and the Central Library. So both of those are pretty close to you all. We hope you can make it out. We try to vary the dates. Um, it's an opportunity for the Senator to give you a summary of what happened. Most of the time will be dedicated to Q&A. So if you have specific questions about property taxes, appraisal system, what happened, uh, any other ideas that you have for the Senate to study before next session so they can queue up for next session, that's also what we're going to be asking. We want if the, the legislative process is continuous, so we hope you can make it out. Call us if you have any questions. Invite your friends. I'll email you the JPEG so if y'all want to share and post on Facebook. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you.